one thing that I've also understood is how complex these supply chains are, like shipping things. Like I think the way Tesla works now, like, okay, so they're mining lithium somewhere, like, I don't know, maybe Australia, they have to ship it to somewhere in China to like refine it. And then they ship it to Nevada where Panasonic turns it into a battery cell. And they're going to ship it to Fremont, turn, put it into a Model S or X, ship that Model S or X maybe back to China if that's what they're buying there. Like there's so many layers and crazy little pieces to this supply chain. Um, and that's, I, it's almost hard to wrap your head around how complicated it is. And you have this awesome slide here, which takes us through these steps. Like it's not as easy as just getting some lithium out of the ground and turning it into a battery. Like it's so yep. much more complicated than that. Um, so I'm curious if you could help us unpack that. First of all, for the lithium ion battery as a concept, for any lithium ion battery, it's not just lithium as like the main ingredient, right? There are many different ingredients out there. The bill of materials for lithium ion batteries have anywhere from like 80 to 150 parts, depending on how specialized you're trying to get. And what you see over here is a very simplistic chart of what are the major supply chain steps to get from an atom of lithium coming out of a mine to it being used in a vehicle, right? So you first go through a mining process and then you have to be going through a specialty chemical process. Then it goes into being a cathode or an anode or an electrolyte or a separator, which are sort of the major building blocks of the lithium ion battery cell. Yep. They all get manufactured together as a cell, which gets put into a pack, which gets put into a car, which gets put into the hands of a consumer. So, you know, I just laid out like seven steps and even that is like too simple. Like there's a, there's a level even below that. Wow. And so could you walk us behind, you know, you have dollars here, 50 to 70 billion required for lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese. Um, you know, what are these numbers behind these different steps? Yeah, absolutely. So the assumption behind this page is if we were to take all of the announcements from automotive manufacturers and all of the announcements from battery cell manufacturers as fact and say that they are going to happen. Like this so is how many gigawatt hours we're gonna hours. pump out or whatever. Exactly, that 2.5 terawatt hours will definitely happen. Those 30 million vehicles on roads, those 30 million electric vehicles on the roads in 2030 will definitely happen. And then we assume how much cathode do we need? How much anode do we need? How much specialty chemical manufacturing do we need? That's where we arrive at these numbers for approximate investment that's needed. I mean, these are not small numbers. Like and this 50, is to hit that 2.5 terawatt, which is in the other slide that you were referencing. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So, th I mean, th these are not tiny numbers at all. And, and to be frank, I still think that we have undershot these numbers. Um, yeah. Because th these industries have major CapEx overruns, major delays. The, the problem over here is the scope and scale of the challenge is just so large. And it is not just putting more vehicles on the road. It's building an entire supply chain to go along with it. Wow. And I mean, talking to you has really opened my eyes to the just how complex and how new of a sort of expertise and challenge this is because it's really a totally different supply chain. Like, I think it's kind of crazy a tangent, but Saudi Aramco, I think is like the world's most viable company more than Apple, like 2.2 trillion. And they just make oil to go to run all of these, you know, propulsion technology. But if we're switching that to the electric drive chain, like this is how big these industries are that we're replacing. Like this is just massive.